Hello, it's Dr. J, and I'm the Director of Programs at the Kinney Center for Autism Education and Support. In our Parent Corner today, we are going to discuss a very important topic regarding social distancing and wearing a mask. In today's overview, we're going to do a quick check-in, talk about COVID-19, have a preparation for the transition over the next couple months, discuss social distancing, have a mask introduction and use. We're gonna practice. We're gonna also have discuss resources. And at the end, know that Kinney is here to support you through this time of uncertainty. So let's check in. How is everyone doing? Does this topic provide some sort of anxiety for you? Are you thinking how the heck is my son or daughter going to have to wear a mask in public? What is going to happen? There's so many questions of uncertainty. So let's check in, comment below, and discuss what are the things that come up when you think about this topic. But with that, I always start my parent corners off too with positive affirmations. And this one is especially important. Audrey Hepburn said that nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. So just keep thinking about that in the back of your head and open yourself up to the topic um, at hand so that we can assist you during this time. So let's get our house in order with COVID-19. Have you had the talk with your family about what is occurring around us? And are you prepared for the state plan and transition when it occurs? The last thing I want you to think about is, do you have the resources that you need? I know you probably have a mask for yourself, but do you have a mask for your child? Do you have hand sanitizer? Do you have gloves? Thinking about making sure that you're being proactive during this time is important to ensure that you have the essentials that you need in the event that the state does open back up. So let's Briefly talk about COVID-19. Transitioning to this new normal can be a very stressful adjustment. And just imagine having one initial conversation, that can't be enough. You have to continue to communicate in age appropriate terms with your child. You must continue to be clear, direct, and honest with them about certain topics that are at hand. You review the important rules that, that we have set and that the recommendations that the CDC provides and also give your child some space and time to process it all and to ask questions. So for example, if you're discussing COVID-19, you could just say, hey, coronavirus is a germ. It can make people very sick. We have to stay away from others to stay healthy. Just think, you initially may have told your child that it's not safe to go outside. And now we're saying, hey, the state's opening back up. That can cause a lot of anxiety in general um, for any child of any age, and even us as adults. So as we prepare for this transition, be ready for potential precursor behaviors, anxiety, and our actions surrounded around this change in the presentation of the virus. It's important to practice in your home and also begin the transition slowly once our governor says that it's time. I am sure that you by now have heard the term social distancing. The current recommendation is to stay home as much as possible unless there is a reason to leave. However, as things start to open up, we need to start thinking about additional ways to social distance in public. The recommendation is to keep a safe distance between people to keep the germ from spreading to others. We want to stand at least six feet apart. This is an important skill that we want to teach individuals with autism and other intellectual disabilities. So here are some quick tips for teaching this skill. We wanna make it concrete. 
You can do so by providing a visual of some sort with items around your home. So for example, a bed and maybe some kitchen tables are about six feet long. If your child is more hands-on, have them stretch their arms out and make a circle and call it their bubble. Inform them that they should have their own bubble. Other people on the outside should have their bubble and there should be a bubble in between anyone that they are close to out in public. It's also important that you explain this to them and practice this at home. For example, if we step back to the bed example, you can stand at the opposite end of the bed and explain that this is six feet apart, or you could practice by holding your arms out. It's important to master this skill at home until your child is able to do so somewhat independently. However, the best practice is to remind your child of this newly learned skill throughout the day prior to going out. When you are out, you may want to stay close to your child to continuously prompt him or her to maintain that six feet of distance with others. For a younger child that may have difficulty with this concept, you may want to try to hold their hands in public so that they, you can make sure that they're six feet apart. You can also prompt this skill by way of active examples. Giving reminders frequently when out may be necessary, and it's also a good idea to point out others that are following this skill appropriately. For example, a clear and quick, hey, look, we are six feet apart right now, or look over there, they are standing six feet from each other in that line. Be sure to praise and reinforce appropriate social distancing throughout the duration of your outing. Make sure that when they are doing it well, you point it out and encourage them for their loved one to for your loved one to repeat that action. If you need to, you can provide a larger reinforcement for engaging in this skill. For example, you can say, you can have your tablet when you're six feet apart from one another, or you get a sticker after five minutes of standing six feet apart from someone and keeping an appropriate distance. If your child is non-vocal, you can utilize PECs on their AAT devices in response to COVID-19. You should continue to encourage visual stimuli and provide a safe space for questions. In addition, just as you probably have been a little bit antsy, realize that your child has been home for some time now and it may take some time for readjustment into the community. You might ask, why is this all important? As places start to reopen and communities start to engage with each other more, this becomes super important. With the exception of essential workers, since about mid-March, we for the most part have been home and not really interacting with people other than our families. However, as things start to open up, we want to ensure that we are safely engaging in social distancing. We also want to ensure individuals with autism and or intellectual disabilities have the chance to go places as it becomes an option again. And thinking about the adult realm, if you have an individual that has autism or an intellectual disability that's involved in an employment program, this is going to be a critical skill to have as it will be mandatory to maintain social distancing. We can all do our part to stay safe and limit the spread of germs with one another and limit the contact with others. Please be sure to frequently wash your hands and appropriately wear a mask in public. By following these recommendations, you and your family can continue to stay safe and slow the curve of COVID-19. As I mentioned before, Wearing a mask is also a recommendation and in some places a requirement to participate in public spaces. The picture to the left is a visual of the probability of contagion. Please take a moment now to pause it so you can see the probability goes from very high to none depending on if you have a mask or not. But why are we even being asked to wear a mask? The Center for Disease Control recommends wearing cloth masks in the community to slow the spread of coronavirus. 
it is especially important now that we know some individuals may be asymptomatic and that means that people might be infected with coronavirus but not even show symptoms because they're not showing symptoms they might be going into the community or going to work and are not realizing that they may be accidentally spe spreading the virus so by wearing your mask you're protecting yourself but you're also protecting others as well. There are various types of masks. For the public, it is reported that cloth masks are the most appropriate as it is recommended that all N95 masks should be reserved for healthcare workers and other medical essential personnel. The CDC is recommending that all children and adults over the age of two who are in a public setting where social distancing will be difficult should be wearing a mask. They also state that anyone who has trouble breathing should not be wearing a mask and those people should be staying home. How do we wear a mask? Your mask should fit snugly but comfortably around your face. It should be secured with either ties or ear loops. It should also have multiple layers of fabric, but it should allow for breathing without restriction. Remember, before you put your mask on, make sure you wash your hands. And as you put your mask on, try to be careful to not touch your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. When you get back home from the outing and you're taking your mask off, wash your hands first. And then again, be cautious not to touch your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Be sure you are aware that masks should allow for breathing without restriction. And following use, depending on the frequency, cloth masks should be washed by hand or in your washing machine. Teaching mask use may be a very hard task for many individuals with sensory processing concerns. This is a hard test for everyone, but as I reported before, we want you to think about this as a learning a new skill. When we learn a new skill, we have to take certain small steps in order to learn that skill and acquire the new information in order to practice it. So when we think about individuals with developmental disabilities, think about using a social story or social narrative with a lot of pictures about why he or she is, needs to use a mask and also how we use masks. We know that visual supports are especially helpful for individuals with developmental disabilities. Within this slide here to the right, here is a visual of what we as behavioral analysts like to call a first then board. This visual will provide something tangible to the person to first wear their face mask and then receive some type of reinforcement or favorite activity for doing so. In this case, the prompt is to first wear your mask and then you can have your tablet. We also want to model wearing masks for people that might be scared or uncomfortable to do so. If you have a child or adolescent, model wearing the mask. Caregivers can model up for with other siblings and they can model by showing your loved one that it's not as scary as it might look. And it's a great first step into teaching them how to do it on their own. You also may want to begin by way of utilizing a visual timer to assist in the increase of duration that your child can tolerate wearing the mask. When you do this, you want to start inside the home first and then branch out to a safe outside space such as your porch or if you have a front or backyard, that will work as well. Overall, it is important to make mask use fun. If you know your child loves a favorite character or likes a favorite, their favorite sports team, your child is more likely to wear that face mask if they see those characters on their mask. At this point in the presentation, you're probably thinking, how the heck is my child going to wear a mask? Or he or she does not like anything around their ears or face. This slide attempts to alleviate some of those sensory problems by providing a modification to ensure that masks should not, would not bother him or her. 
There are headbands that you can purchase or make buttons to, in place of the mask strap on the hooks so it won't be around the ear. Another way is to place buttons on a baseball cap. There are also a number of behind the head clips or headbands that you can use to cover only the back of your head to decrease rubbing on the skin or ears while wearing the mask. The most unique of them, of all, in my opinion, is the window mask. This type of mask was used for individuals that are hearing impaired, as well as anybody that has difficulty with communication or precursor facial expression behavior. Always remember, regardless of the mask and before you even attempt to assist to put on the mask, you need to practice and allow your child to get comfortable with even just holding the mask. Here is a short clip of a child being introduced to a mask. 